Oh, wait. Thank you for the recent video response. I appreciate that. I have been uh, rather occupied of late with some um, graduate studies, and I'm going to try to uh, carve out a little bit more time to um, uh, discuss this a little bit more in depth, this topic. It is one that interests me, and I, I do not consider myself some great authority on the subject of moral philosophy myself, so I'm with you in that sense. I do apologize for, for getting... Uh, bearing my uh, 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 lion's share of the jumpy, bumpy start that we got off uh, on and uh, on this. And sometimes I have a habit of getting into some very spirited discussions, <laughs> to put it mildly. Um, really, what are we talking about here? We're talking about the relationship, I think, of, the, of morality to either Christian theism or to a non-theistic alternative, such as secularism, naturalism, how would those, how would that outlook and that philosophy of life, how would that account for morality? Um, and then would, would those secular uh, philosophies attempt to derive, uh, put ethical norms or obligations on people, act like they're universal, so that they're, you know, objective ethical norms, and yet try to rely on something in nature, so try to use some interpretive device to judge a natural tendency or process, such as generalization about human nature, and then draw the implication from that that, okay, this is a moral norm, this is, a, this is an obligation, this is a moral duty now. So that's, I think, what we're talking about. Um, I'd like to, uh, first of all, I'd, I'd like to address uh, right off the bat just a couple of your statements. Um, you, at about one minute into it, you talk about where does the compulsion uh, come from to act kindly rather than cruelly. Um, there, there may be a compulsion to act in a certain way, whether kindly or cruelly, as you point out. That compulsion isn't necessarily right or wrong. That's just part of nature. So that actually ties into the topic that we're looking at, that we're discussing. We don't have justification from a mere natural process. One person seems to manifest, to have this instinct or compulsion to be really nasty, um, really horrific, and another person has a, a, maybe a natural instinct to do the opposite. Neither one of those is a basis from which we ought to derive a, an, an ultimate norm. We don't get a moral norm from either one of those. So I, I hope I've addressed that in some way. Um, you, we talked about, uh, or you, you mentioned getting close to two minutes into it, you talk about this uh, notion of God being a third party um, coming in. I, I think that theism would approach that as God being the, the source of, of uh, morality. So if we're going to um, talk about command theory, um, any any le commands would have to be legitimated from a higher source, from someone who is an authority. So either we would turn to man or human nature for that, but again, they we can't just derive, just from a natural process, we wouldn't be able to derive an ethical norm from that. So someone would, there would still need to be an authorizing agent, someone who is acting as an authority to interpret and say, okay, this is the norm, this is the ethical obligation that you have in this situation that everybody would have. It's like a universal statement. That's what we're talking about. Um, you, know, you talk a little bit about um, deceptive language, about right, maybe around three minutes into it. Um, maybe you could give a more precise example of where you think I'm turning the tables if I'm acting like theism is in a better position than naturalism or skepticism or secularism to explain morality. Maybe you could give an example of where I'm, I'm, I'm acting as though it has the advantage here and then elsewhere, maybe I'm not acknowledging a problem with how theism would account for morality. I assume that maybe that's what you're driving at there. So maybe just maybe you could just be a little bit more precise, uh, offer an example, perhaps. Um, now, I would like to talk about conscience, our apparent innate sense of right and wrong. Where does that come from? Well, I would like to argue that, that that's innate sense of right and wrong, even the fact that we can call one act 
cruel or nasty, and a different type of act as kind or warm-hearted, the mere fact of that implies that we have some inherent moral values. We have some values that are kind of set in place. Now, I don't think they're being set in place is well accounted for on a naturalistic basis, in a natural worldview or naturalistic worldview. You talk about compulsion, but a compulsion that maybe we've uh, gained in our nature through some evolutionary or other natural process uh, by itself, that that doesn't explain the apparent the um, predominance, let's say, of conscience very well. How would we know what's right just by simply having a compulsion or a natural instinct to do or refrain from doing a particular act in a given situation? Now, on theistic ground, I think we can account for that fairly well. Um, we have God who has created man according to Genesis, the first book in the Old Testament. He's created man in his likeness or image. The words likeness and image are fairly uh, similar. They seem to denote um, a property that a man has which separates him from uh, the beast that just acts strictly on their uh, by their nature, by by instinct. So man has a reasoning and a linguistic capacity um, to judge things, to make moral judgments that um, animals appear to lack, uh, essentially. So we are created in God's image. Now, that moral judgment making uh, capacity or conscience, um, which which I believe is peculiar to uh, man, to humans, uh, is appears to be better explained on the theistic level, on the theistic assumption um, that God has created man in his image, that man is not merely a natural uh, process or end result or byproduct of evolution. Now, I'd be interested in getting your feedback on this, of course, and um, I know that you've alluded to this a little bit in prior videos, and I think maybe you've been a tad abstract or vague in certain areas where you would use um, a natural uh, process or phenomenon in order to account for um, given moral uh, moral standards. And so I would challenge you to dig a little bit deeper, probe a little farther um, in this area, and I look forward uh, to another video response if you have one, and uh, maybe we can get into some more particulars. All right, thanks a lot. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.